to know the level you are now. Kindly bring out your phone and put it in a selfie mode so that the world can see that you are no longer the you they used to know. You need to show it to the world that you are both only. Hey. Anybody who say you know go 
Anybody will say you no go grow. Anybody will say you no go rich. Anybody will say you no go shine. They go yell. They go yell. They go yell. They go yell. They go see him. They go see him. They go see him. They go see him. Anybody will say you no go grow. Anybody will say you no go shine. Anybody will say you no go light. Anybody will say you no go blow. They go yell. 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 Anybody will say you no go make up. Anybody will say you no go grow. Anybody will say you no go move. Anybody will say you no go shine. They go see him. 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 I want to be the my praise. 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 Oh, 
Those of you on that side, those of you at the entrance, at the gate there, even if you are registering, you need to come here, come to the front here, we want to bless you. I know you will not reject blessing. Come here. Those of you outside, if you can hear us, come inside. Come inside. You could have been one of the choirs too, who are here seated. Anybody can be used by God. Come here and discipline yourself to be here. God bless you. I want to thank those of you who are already seated, uh, you're already standing. Please, re let's rise up and, and, uh, and be on our feet because we are in for a moment of the prophetic release that your life has been waiting for. Be on your feet, everybody. Once again, I want to thank all speakers. Thank all leaders. Thank all those who have worked hard to make this conference a success. I want to thank all of you who have been very attentive 
and receiving. I know there are a few who are roaming about, but those of you who are attentive, you are the one that God has prepared for this time. And I believe that as I begin to minister, you will receive what God has for you. I can't hear your amen. I know many of you are destined to be great. And you are waiting for a moment like this. A moment that is so crucial in your life history. The topic before me say, go and rule your world. Wow. Wow. Thank you for receiving like that. I see, I see a great a great expectation in you. So I repeat again, go and rule your world. My brothers and sisters, it takes a word for somebody who is nobody to be raised up to become somebody. A word. A word. I'm not going to take you too much into teaching this morning, but I, I have a burden in my heart. I have a message that God gave me on this topic. I have a prophetic word for somebody, and I believe that person is here. No matter how low your level has been your background cannot and must not put your back on the ground you cannot stay at the level where your parents stop i therefore declare once again by the word of the lord and by his ordination and mandate upon my life, every living soul hearing my voice right now, it is time to go and rule your world. Do this for me before I go into this message. Don't touch anybody, but just look at their face and say to him or her prophetically, your time to reign and rule over your world is now. Say it three times to that person. Yes? Yes? Somebody's not saying it. Yes, 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 yes. Let somebody say now. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We adore you. For the beginning of this conference has been wonderful and the end is also, also glorious. You have blessed your children. You have protected and preserved them. You have given them good weather in this environment. The conference is coming to an end now. Father, we thank you for what you are about to do in this closing message. Lord, as I open my mouth, may the word of authority, the word of power, word that can change life within the deep of an eye, within a, a space of hours, may that word come with power. May your children become a fertile soil for the seed of this world. May their life and destiny receive this world. May they go from here as leaders and people with dominion mandate. May you, O oh God, cause their heart to be open and their minds to be open. Bless everyone here this moment. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Can you shout a better amen? You can do better. Shout it again. Good. You can do better. Do it again. Hallelujah. Now, what I just did shows to you that you can be better than you are now. Can you see how your amen was rising? Without any additional energy put in you, that tells you that where you are now, you can go beyond it. That tells you that there's a le better level than where you are. And by the word of the Lord, I declare this moment. Every child of God here this moment, the sky will no longer be your limit. I hear a voice again that says, I should announce this one. He said that some of you have been hearing stories of success, breakthrough. You have read biographies of people who are great. The Lord says, I should announce, it is your turn now to be read by others. Yes, 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 yes. There are some of you in the music industry, you have seen people like Sinachi and others. And you are looking at them as models, as role models, as, as people are far ahead. God say he will take you beyond their level. You have seen great preachers, and you say, wow, I wish I had this kind of anointing. As I stretch my hand upon you, greater anointing is going to come because the, the glory of the later house will be greater than the former. Whoever you have seen, and you admire their ministry, and the grace of God upon their life, I say receive higher grace now. Somebody shout, I receive it. It is done. Take your seat. Hallelujah. Put your hand together for Jesus. The topic is go and rule your world. I will read a few passages of the Bible and then move into this message. If you have your Bibles, please open it to the book of the beginning. The book of the beginning is the book of Genesis. There is no other book in the world that tells of the beginning. Except the Bible. It's only the Bible you find the word in the beginning. Because before the beginning of the beginning, the Bible has been existed. The word of God has been existed. Verse 26 is the first text I will read. Then I move to the second text, which is where your team is taken from. Take one more and I will stop there. Both others for you to read a reference later. Genesis 126. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. And every creepy thing that creeped upon the earth. The key word there is to have dominion. And the theme of your conference is above all. There is correlation and there is relationship that exists between dominion and being above all. God gave this order to humanity and till tomorrow the order still remains dominion you can put your finger there let's move quickly to your principal text the book of Deuteronomy Deuteronomy are you there? I don't answer it. Deuteronomy chapter what? Chapter 28. Verse what? 
Huh? Let's start from 14. Deuteronomy 28. From 13, rather. He said, And the Lord shall make thee the head. I thought somebody would say, Amen. And no detail. You have two, you have a, you know, I, I would say two, I would say one choice, one to make. Just to be one. And the only choice is to be the head. Not two. To be the head. Say you shall be the head. Aha. And not the tail. He didn't say you shall either be the head or tail. That's why he said you have only one choice. You shall be the head. I can't hear the choir. I only hear from this side. The choir is not responding. You shall be the head. And not the tail. And thou shall be above only. No option. No other way. Only. And thou shall not be beneath. Stop here. No. Second part of that text. Put a condition there. I will come back to that condition. But I will I'll read it now. Say, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee to do to observe and keep it. I will come back to that second part. Oftentimes, we quote the word of God without looking at the context and the whole story. God put the condition there. We will deal with that later. Above only is the theme ruling your world is my topic. The two work together. You cannot be above only and not rule your world. Is a positive. You cannot rule your world if you are beneath. You have to be above. I used to see the same method for many years when I when I was still a teacher. Uh, and uh, I always use this analogy for my students in research methodology class. The analogy is this. Beginning researchers, I regard them as dwarfs. Beginning researchers are dwarfs. And dwarfs are very small, they are short, they are like this. When they speak, you can't let you hardly hear them. So I call beginning researchers dwarfs. And all the researchers who are published, I call them giants. And I said, therefore, as a beginning researcher, for you to be heard, for you to be known, you need to stand on the shoulder of the giant. When you mount the shoulder of the giant, you will be a little bit taller than the giant. Yes or no? Because if you stay down there and you are speaking, we can't hear you, you are seeing, you are not known. And so you need to refer or reference other scholars, other reputable scholars who are known. And when you quote them and quote them and quote them and analyze and synthesize what they have said, and you now speak by drawing inference from their comments and findings, then we will hear you. You are mounting the shoulder of fire, and we can hear you. Because if you speak, if you say, I, I, according to me, they will say, Who are you? What are you accomplishing? What did you, what did you publish? Where, where did you start? But when you stand on the shoulder of giants, we will hear you. There are some of you today, a greater grace will come upon your life. There's an anointing in the house. 
that want to raise up people, leaders, champions, people we have dominion, those who will rule their world. And you are nobody right now because you are a, a, a beginning researcher in the, in, the, in, the, in the world, in the sea of life. But grace is going to come upon you. That will make you to speak because you will mourn the shoulder of giants. And the world will hear you. Somebody is hearing me. The world will hear your voice. Oh, you can't say better, amen. I said the world will hear your voice. If nobody has ever become prominent in your household, in your generation, by this word of prophecy, God will raise you up in your generation as a voice to be heard. You will not only be seen, you will be heard. If I'm speaking to you, let me hear your amen. Above all, above only, above all over, you need to be above in order to rule your world. My assignment is to raise a generation of those who will rule their world as I conclude this conference with this message. Now, when we talk about the world, what do we mean? You can interpret it in two ways. You can talk about the cosmos, the world at large. There are those who rule the world today whom, whose name or names are household names. There are young men like you at the age of 25 who have broken records and have done significant things that nobody has ever done. Listen to me. No one among you is too young to begin to make waves in your field of endowment, in your field of calling. Nobody is too young to begin to make waves in Nigeria and in Africa. It's not by age. It's by the value you add to the cosmos that will speak for you. As from today, as you have gone through this conference, you are going back with a high level of grace. I, I, your amen is so weak this morning. I said you are going back with a high level of grace than those who have lived before you. And God will open new chapter for your life. You are just coming up. God will open new door for you in the name of Jesus. The world is waiting for you. The cosmos is eagerly waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. Listen to me. Whatever has happened to, to date is a, a, preliminary, a preliminary. It's not the end. It's the beginning. Many of you, you, are, you have great people you admire. You have great leaders you have seen and you feel they have arrived. That was how they too thought 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when they were in your position. They thought those people that were running those, those periods, we are the best. But today, they have surpassed them. Are you hearing me? You too, those people you are looking at as stars, by this prophetic word I release into your life, you will surpass them in the name of Jesus. Huh. I see some people receiving it, but I see some people sleeping. I hope some, nobody's not, I hope no, nobody is sleeping away this opportunity. Let me ask you a question. When do you think you are ready to, re, to reign and rule your world? Next year? When you get married? Do you know you can start now? The best thing to do is to begin to set the pace before you get married. So that whoever is coming to marry you 
is coming to add value, is not coming to devalue you. So that they will not say they make you. But they will see that you are already on the rising path before they came as your spouse. Some of you think it's only when you get married you can begin to rise. I declare upon your life. Because I'm God's servant and as a father, I am called to bless you. I am ordained to raise up leaders. All of you hearing my voice, whatever has kept you on the same spot, whatever makes you to struggle, to struggle as if what you are achieving is impossible, today, I break that jinx in your life now. I am aware. Listen to me. It is possible to fail exam. Fail exam and see yet and yet and be a star in that career. Are there, are there testimonies? Are there people like that? All over the world. In America. In Nigeria. People that professors say they are what? They are dollars. But today, the world is celebrating them. So, the fact that you fell back doesn't mean you cannot get up. In fact, your knockdown is not your knockout. And when you, how many have been knocked down and they came back and won? Titus, heavyweight champions. Knock now, but they rose back and, and, and knock the other guy out. Your knockdown is not your knockout. No matter where you have fallen, today, by the authority of heaven, you are rising to prominence. God told me this morning, and I, I mentioned that to my children in devotion, that what God wants to do for you is not just success. Are you hearing me? Success is a level. And it des it's not a destination, it's a, it's a journey. But there's a, there's a better one called significance. Significance. Where your name alone, even when you are gone, you are still speaking. When you are no more physically there, you are still imparting lives. I raise up my hand upon your life. I don't care any hand that has been laid upon you before that may be working against you. I raise a holy hand upon your life. From today, your rising becomes unstoppable. Even if there is a cause in your lineage that says nobody rises, nobody becomes significant. You that you are here, by this hand upon you, you will break that record. You will break that record. I say you will break that record. Let me hear a better amen. I came from a family where nobody rises. The highest level that my uncle who joined the army for many years, Goto was captain. And I, they, they, they sacked him from captain. And that was the end of his career. But when God raised me up, I said we are breaking that gene, that genetic trait, that ancestral cause, that inherited pattern is broken. Few years back, just two or three years ago, his son came to me and said, Daddy, I joined the military and I started from the rank of a captain. They leveled the father died and stopped. That's where he started. He's, a, he's, he's now a major. I think they promoted him now. He, they leveled the, the father served 38 years and, and couldn't cross captain. But he's, the first year he joined, he started at that level. There are some of you here. There is a word coming out today. I am not here to theologize. 
I'm here to prophesy. There's a time for theology. There's a time for prophecy. Today, Kapa Libro Kasute, Ile Kesute, Ele Prokosutoria. Whatever limits your parents, your siblings, your colleagues, your contemporaries is broken before you now. Mama, 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 it has happened. What I'm prophesying upon your life, I have seen it. It's possible. It has happened. You are the next to testify. Government Student Fellowship. How many of you want to become a professor at the age of 30? You want to become a star at the age of 35? 25 is where you should start. The, that, that, the, the, you don't need to wait for 35. It's possible to finish your PhD at 25. It has happened. You know when, did you, do you know the age when, when the Oshibajo became a professor? Huh? Listen, we have uh, when Professor Mosi became a professor, we say, ah, he's a young man. He's not a young man. He did 58 already. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, he's not a young man. 32 is when Oshibajo became a, a professor in this country. He's the vice president Coming from a church like our own. Not be so. We are due, long overdue. For you, I can't go into politics. I can't become an engineer again. I cannot become a medical doctor. They wanted me to become a medical doctor, but God said, you are, you are a pastor. Although now I, I, I hire a medical doctor and pay them in my hospital. But... I am not a medical doctor. Some people think because I have a PhD. I am not. I cannot be all those things, but you are designed to be. I cannot work in the United Nations. I cannot be Director General of a, of a World Trade Organization, but you can be the one to succeed whoever is there. You can take over from those. The African Development Bank is headed by Nigeria. Are you aware of that? Oh, you are not aware. There are Nigerians in strategic positions. But we want to move beyond that to government being in strategic positions. Among you shall rise. A star in the household of David. Among you shall rise. A ruler in this nation. Among you shall rise. A ruler in this continent among you shall rise. A ruler in the global village. Whatever it takes to become prominent in your field of calling, in your field of endeavor, of study, receive that grace now. Somebody shout, I receive it. I can't hear you say it again. If you believe with me, say it again. All right, take your seat. Let me give you some notes. God bless you. Take some notes down before I close the message. Just some things down so that you have some things to refer to. I said the world can refer to the cosmos or number two, your circle of influence. Your area of influence or per career or profession. When we say you rule your world, what is the current situation of the world that you are supposed to rule? Let me list them for you. Number one, the world we are in today is a world of unemployment. People begging to get your I beg to apply. But when you are ruling your world, rather than begging to apply, you become a prior of labor. Are you hearing me? 
some of you will become employer of labor in the name of Jesus. Rather than begging to apply, you create jobs by your ingenuity and innovation, by your creativity. You break through the protocol and create jobs. The world we live in is the world of insecurity. Insecurity all over the place, not only in Nigeria. We live in the world of uncertainty. We live in the world that is rapidly changing. And you need to be dynamic in order to rule that world that is rapidly changing. We live in the world of ungodliness. You need to be righteous in order to rule it. We live in the world of innovation. You need to be able to think this outside the box in order to rule it. We live in the world that is uh, 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 full of creativity and that reward creativity. If you are creative, this world will reward you. We live in the world that is globally competitive. Nobody is waiting for anybody. Everybody wants to have an edge over another person. It's a world of global compet competition. We live in a world that is globally connected. It's a small world. No more a separated world. You can be in Nigeria and be selling market in America. And people will buy and you become a millionaire. That's the world we live in. A complex world. So simple but so complex at the same time. We live in a world that is incontroversially scientific. Everything is going scientific. We live in the world that is increasingly become secularized. So many things that describe the world that you are going to rule. And you need to be on top of it. You need to be able to stand tall and not be under it in order to rule in this world. Therefore, let me give you what do you need in order to rule your world. I will run through it quickly. Take your notes and jot down. I'm going to run through seven points what you need to rule your world. Number one, you need total obedience to the known will of God. Why did I start with this one? In the text of your team, from chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, verse 1 to 13, all you see there is blessing. 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 With the condition that if you will obey. From, from verse 14 to verse 68, it's full of curses. When I read it, as if I have not read it before, I say, ah, ah. Why did God give only 30 verses for blessing and 14 to 68 for curses? Because he knew the nature of Israel as stubborn people, disobedient people. And he prepared for them if they will not obey. The curses are more <laughs> than the blessing. Because disobedience brings curses. Listen to me. If you are going to rule your world, Brothers and sisters, you must be obedient to the known will of God. You must not compromise your faith. You must not say your bad right. You must not give up when temptation comes. You must not steal. If the Bible said you, you shall not steal. You must not be part of those who, who en en engage in exam malpractices. You must not look for a shortcut if you want to rule your world. When you see the truth, you must tell the truth as it is and do not lie. You must be plain. You must be genuine. You must be original. You must be a, a Christian that can be trusted. You must be a, an example. You must not compromise your faith. You must not be the one that will be dating two sisters and manipulating them. And you think God will make you a star by doing that. You will never, never rise up to, a, to prominence if you are a manipulator, sin will, will always bring people down. And therefore, you, no, you must not partake in any, any secret sin, any evil, shady deeds. You must not join hands with the wicked. You must expose evil works. You must not hide, you know, with those who manipulate and deceive. Obedience is number one key to rule your world. Number two, diligence is the second key. Somebody, I want to be sure you are listening to me. Let somebody shout, 
diligence. You didn't shout it. I didn't say, I didn't say, say it. I said, shout it. Say, diligent. Now, look at the person by your side. Prophesy to, to him or her. Say, from today, receive the grace of diligence. No, you are not saying very well. Look at his face. Say, from today, thou shall be diligent. Proverbs 22, 29 say, have you found a diligent young man in any campus in Nigeria? Watch that man. Watch that, that sister. He or she will stand before leaders, kings, great people, priests, not before me, men. Have you found a sister who is diligent in his studies? Who knows that God does not bless laziness? Who knows that hard work pays? Who knows that you, there is no room for manipulation or cheating in exam? And he takes his work or her work seriously. That man, that young man, that young lady will rule the award. Whoever is thoughtful will not make it. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12, 12 verse 27 say who is, whoever is thoughtful will not roast his game. But the diligent man will get precious wealth. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 10 says therefore brothers, be all more diligent to confirm your calling and election. If you practice these qualities, you will never fail. Proverbs 12, 24 says, the hand of the diligent will rule. Everybody, do your hand like this. Do your hand like this. Do your hand like this. I can't see you. I can't see you. Talk to that lady at your back. Touch that lady at your back. Yes. Touch her. Touch her. Do your hand like this. Do your hand like this. Everybody, do your hand like this. Say, my hand will rule the world. Let me change it. Say it better this way. Say, my hand will rule my world. Put it up like that. I read to you again. The, the word of God. Proverbs 12, 24. He said the hand of the diligent will rule while the slothful will be put to forced labor. I declare as you lift up the hand, your hand will rule your world. Hey, hey, hey. The mantle of leadership in your various field of endeavor it delivered to your hands now. Some people are not lifting up their hands, so and I'm prophesying upon hands. Upon hands. Some of you are you are scholars, you use your hand to write papers. One article can change your level, and they'll be looking for you all over the world to deliver that paper. Research rule the world these days. And you are using your hand. Whether you are a, a doctor. A, sur a surgery you perform can, can publicize you. I mean, you are a businessman. You are an artist. That thing you draw can change your level. I declare the hands that are lifted up. According to Proverbs 12, 24, your hand will be diligent to rule your world. Somebody shout and receive it. All right, take your seat. You must be diligent. And you all know what it means to be diligent. I can preach on that for the next 12, 12 hours. But I'm going to jump it and move on. Because you know what it means to be diligent. To be diligent means to be disciplined. To be diligent means to increase in knowledge. To be innovative. To be hardworking. To be dedicated for a cause. To be willing to pay the price. To achieve that thing you have set your mind to do. Diligent people don't give up. And they don't accept no for an answer. I declare from today, whatever barriers that want to stop you, because you know that that portion belongs to you, you want to pursue it, but you have been dealing here, but something is blocking you, and you are about to give up. That barrier is broken now. Let me hear you better, amen. Number three, because of time, what do you need to rule your world? Let me hear you. Number one is what? Shout it. Number two, choir. 
Eh? Number three, constant renew of your mind. Your mind is the capacity God has given to you to do things that are beyond human ability. The mind is so powerful. That is why Romans 12, 1 and 2 say, you need to renew your mind. He said, let your mind be renewed constantly. And if I want to apply this to you as a student, you need to begin to imagine great things for yourself. Your mind is your spiritual eye with which you see success and breakthrough. You perceive with your mind. You see physically with your eyes, but your, your, your mind sees farther than your eyes. With your mind, you can conceive ideas and it becomes a reality. That is why education is supposed to change the way you think. That's why you get education. Education is not to speak to your eyes. It is to change your mindset. So your mind capacity is enlarged. You'll be able to see what others don't see. You'll be able to see possibilities. Do you know there is nothing called there's nothing called impossibility. Do you know that? Do you know that there's nothing called impossibility? There's nothing. And the fourth, many years ago, by the power of the mind, he wrote something down. Before he started manufacturing vehicles, he said, he said, there is a time coming. Because at that time, it was horse. Horses, they were used. The rich man, we have a horse to ride. He said, there's a time. He said, cars will replace horses. He said, journey that cars will, will be able to make, that horses cannot make, will be, will be common. And he, he, he listed many things that cars will be doing, that horses will not be doing. And those who, who had him say, ah, ah, are you crazy in your mind? How can that happen? But today, how many people you see here riding horses from Lagos to Akure? Or in the U.S., long journey. No, horses now are just for race or for pleasure. A rich man, today we buy, in fact, it's no more petrol car. It's electric car. Tesla, you know what they are doing now? You know the kind of money they are, they, 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 they are, they are uh, value in the in stock market went up by two by 500 percent because in the next 10 years the number of electric cars will be more than petrol cars and people are putting money there because somebody has a mind that is enlarged and can think outside the box your mind must be enlarged you must not limit yourself to where you are now Young people, begin to think about 10 years from now. What, the, what kind of world do you want to create? What kind of world do you want to live in? 20 years from now, where are you going to be? How do you see yourself? Don't just be a, a child of circumstances. Whatever comes is what happens. Whatever happens is what you are said. No, you can create your world. You can create the world you want. By the capacity of your mind. I speak to somebody here. Whatever you begin to see today through the power of your mind shall become your reality in the name of Jesus. Let me pray that prayer one more time. But before I pray it, where do you see yourself in the next 20 years? I'll give you one minute. In the next 10 years, where do you want to be? Uh, yes, above. Which above? In what area? In what specific area? You don't know you need to begin to, you need to, begin to look ahead and think and, and create and pursue that creation. From today, I declare, if you can think beyond the level you are now, whatever your mind can perceive, the Lord will give it to you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you can perceive, you can receive. And the mind is where perception comes. I don't, I don't have enough time for that. Let me move to ne the next point. 
for you to rule your world. Number four, you need a prophetic voice. Somebody say prophetic voice. Ah, you are not answering me. Say a prophetic voice. Why? When God speak prophetically into your life, that small gift that you have, you don't value. It will become something that will showcase you to the world. A prophetic voice. You know, I don't want to mention that because it's public. I, I, I know many singers in this, in this nation today who are public figures who came out and when they, when they started, it was a prophetic voice from their pastor that raised them up. You know them now. And today, when they sing in a place, you, you see the crowd that comes. A voice, a prophetic voice raised them up. Today, I lift my hand upon you. Those of you who have been down for long, it is time for your rising. As I am giving the prophecy, you will rise up and say it. You cannot sit down. If you want to sit down, then you want to remain down. I say a prophetic voice will raise you and here you are sitting down. As from today, where you are will be your least level. I repeat again. Where you are now shall be your least level. There are people among you, God has endowed you, but you don't understand what to do. I'm, I'm praying for you. I may not have time to do it at the end of the message because I have to stick to my time. I'm doing it now. God told me there are some of you, you, three categories. One, you don't know, you don't even know what your shape is, what God has shaped or, or made you to be. You are still confused, you are lost. There are some of you like that. But as I speak right now, may your mind capacity be enlightened and be enriched with revelation of God's agenda for your life in the name of Jesus. May the cloud of confusion be over your life now. I say may the cloud be over, out of your life in the name of Jesus. Some of you, you are clear what to do, but you don't know how to pursue it. You are like that man, that, that by, 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 by the, uh, by, uh, uh, beside, uh, beside that, who had nobody to help him. But one day Jesus showed up, and he didn't need to go to the river again. The, the one that has the power over the river came, and, and raised him up. I come in the name of the resurrected Savior. Today is Easter Sunday. Jesus rose because of you. He rose so that you will not fall. He rose so that you will rise. He rose so that you become significant. I lay my hand upon you today. I declare where you are confused, that confusion is over. And for those of you who have clear direction, but no helper, from today, destiny helpers are connected to your life. He that will raise you up will be looking for you. Let me hear a better amen. Virtues are going out as I'm prophesying. I know it. Somebody's life is changing. Somebody's story is changing. Somebody's destiny is changing. Somebody is moving from cause to blessing. Let that person say, I am. Shout it again. By prophecy, God led the nation of Israel out of Egypt. And by the same prophets and prophecy, he sustained them so that they will fulfill their destiny. Hear me, children of God, daughters of Zion, sons of the Most High, you that are covenant children, you are not ordinary. You cannot be under this auction and be confused. You cannot be under this auction and become wayward. You are forbidden from becoming wayward. 
any cause trailing your life, trailing your career, trailing you all over the place by this pronouncement. That cause is averted now. Makakaba Shataba Rasataba I say one more time. From today, where God has destined you to go, the path to your greatness, for you to rule your world, let it be shown to you now. From today, you will no longer wander here and there. From today, you will no longer beg for help. From today, you will no longer be below. From today, you will rise above. And you shall be above only. Let somebody shout, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take your seat. Let me round up. I felt in my spirit I've achieved God's goal for my for my ministration now. I know your life is imparted. So let me round up. I gave you four points already, right? You can write down 2 Kings 7 1, where Elijah prophesied, say, This time tomorrow. And it became a reality. So, this time next year, when this conference or any other conference will be held that will involve you, you will have a testimony to give concerning your life. <laughs> Number five, for you to rule your world, you need specific divine direction concerning your career. That's number six. Genesis 26, one to four. Specific divine what? Direction concerning your career. I know many of you, you may be studying something that you will not come back to when you graduate. Are you hearing me? You finish, you graduate, you put the certificate down. And you now start the new course that God originally designed for you when you were your mother's womb. Jeremiah 1 4. And that is what I call divine direction. In Genesis 26, Isaac was good, going to Egypt. And God said, Don't go. Stay in Gera. This is where I will bless you. Specific divine direction and he stayed there many of you when you read and say and god bless us he became great I say, you don't know why how he became blessed he's so in the land even sometimes we misapply we don't do proper exegesis we say he's so and you say he's offering that's so he's not offering he planted crop it's not a offering gift some of you butcher the bible and god will forgive you and you want to give offering, you quote Bibles, passages that are not directly related. But the point I want to bring out is I seek God's direction for his life, where his blessing is. And he went there. And the whole people of that village, that city, envy him because he became richer than all of them. And became mightier than all of them. And they were afraid of him. And that's where God gave him a place he called Rehoboth. Here God has made room for me. Listen to me. As big as the world is, there is a room for you. There is a place for you to reign and rule. The record has not closed. The Guinness World Record has not closed. He cannot close until your name appears there. Who is that person? Who is that person? Who is that person that want to break record? Guinness a book of record is not closed yet until your name enters. I declare record breaker, trail blazer, pace setter. Where are they? Oh, yeah, receive grace. I am not too old to break record. I'm older than many of you. 
But I told God I've not started because I where others stop will be my beginning. So when I start, you will hear my voice. You will know that God has raised up a prophet. Are you hearing me? If I can think like that, you can imagine yourself. Every time I teach students in the seminary for many years, when I close the class, I pray for them. I, and one single prayer I always pray is that you will be greater than me. And they will all say, Amen. And too late, God is answering those prayers. I've seen many of them in great places. So I pray the same prayer for my children. And when I prayed, my last one said, Yes, I am a better version of you. I love. You are a better version of me. I say, You need to work hard. Yes, you need to work hard. Where I am today, you will be greater than me, but before you get to where I am, you must work hard. Is it not so? Uh -huh. So I told him, if you are a better version of me, that means you'll be better than me. I have prayed it for you, but you need to work hard. It's not by mouth. Very important. All of you who have ideas, you don't know what to do. Begin to do something. Start somewhere. Start somewhere. I pray for you today. That idea that God gave to you that's supposed to showcase you, it will not die. It will not die. It shall become a reality. Somebody shout a better amen. All right, give me, let me give you the second to the last point. Take your seat number six. You need divine helper to reign and rule. God has designed the world or planned the world in such a way that nobody rises without the help of another person. That's the way God is it. There's not anybody in the world today who has risen up and they will tell you somebody do, did what? Raise them up. Somebody help them up. Divine helpers are God's chosen vessels that gives you energy where your energy fails. They give you strength where your strength fails. They encourage you. They are agents of change. Your destiny helpers are agents of elevation, agents of enlargement, agents of promotion. Destiny helpers are agents of a common breakthrough. Destiny helpers are agents of new things. They are the people that will say, I will stand for him. When others are saying he cannot do it, they will say, we believe in him, he can do it. When you are not there, and they are making a decision, they want to meet and decide whether to give you that position or not. Just in a bar around there, we say, let's give him. He can do it. They speak on your behalf. When there is nobody to, when you are not there to speak for yourself. Just in a we have many of them in the Bible. Elijah was Elisha's destiny helper. And Elisha needed to follow him to get the mantle. Peter was Cornelius' destiny helper. You see that in Acts chapter 10 where Peter had to come to the house of Cornelius. The Bible said Cornelius had been praying and fasting for years, giving arms. And God said, Cornelius! Your, your offering, your dedication has been remembered by God. And God has sent Peter to you. Elijah was the widow of Sarephas, destiny ever. The widow that we name childless or without hope. What of David? David was the destiny ever of Matthew Moshek. Even when the father of Matthew Moshek died long ago, and nobody remember him, David remember him. Abimelech was the destiny ever of Jeremiah. Good Samaritan was the destiny helper of the certain uh, uh, man who was wounded by the armed robbers we call uh, the, the, uh, 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 the, the, uh, the man that was wounded on the road uh, when the armed robbers attacked him in Luke chapter 10. The good Samaritan was the destiny helper. So many in the Bible that God used to raise up somebody. And in the world today, billionaires you mentioned. Mention Bill Gates. Mention uh, the richest black man in Africa. Somebody help him. In addition to the prophetic word, word of people like Idaosa upon his life, somebody help him. 
today, all of you that are full of ideas, endowments, but you don't have helper, after this conference, your helper will begin to look for you in the haze. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I look, I say in a haze. You are not going to beg them. Wherever your destiny ever is, I, I, I command their conscience to be awoke now and their mind to begin to think about you. Let them begin to look for you. Ah, my brothers, my children, my sisters, when destiny ever comes to you, when God gives them to you. It's not what you do or what you don't do. They don't care. They will just be, I have seen it. I, can you imagine somebody telling me, Pastor, don't be afraid to ask. I hope you will not be afraid to ask whatever you want. A man I don't know. Somebody just mentioned my name to him. And she, he picked interest in me. He said, Don't be afraid to do what? Open check. I've given the testimony many times. One day, you know, I came to a program. I'm not in Nigeria here. I minister, and it's, after it's, he came and put the check in my pocket. He said, Don't open the check until you get home. And I know that must be a big thing. He said, Don't open the check until you get home. I quickly round up the program. Ah, what are you saying? I know. So I finished. <laughs> because I want to follow his advice. He doesn't want me to become the thing to enter my head there. He said, don't open the ghetto before you open. So I ran up quickly. I got to my room and then brought the shock. And I was shocked. I was, I look at it. I went to my wife. I said, see you. See you. Come and see you. Come and see you. If you hear the amount, you will carry your Bible and say, let's say the grace. Destiny helpers. They will just look at you, look at you and say, you need this. You need this one. Oh, yeah, get it. When you did it, they will say, you need to get it. From today, Bale Kasuta, Ira Katabayagada, those who are in position to help you, who refused before, they shall be looking for you. I said they shall look for you. You will not look for them. They will look for you. I said they will look for you. They will speak on your behalf. Receive. I know what I'm talking about. Yes, you receive it. You receive it. You have said it, you receive it. Enough is enough of struggling alone. Nobody rises by himself alone. Nobody. Nobody. God created the world like that. That somebody will lift up somebody. So that somebody will lift up somebody. And because somebody lift up somebody, that somebody will lift up I mean, because of the, the destiny and past that have impacted my life. How many people have I impacted? Many. I'm not praising myself. And I've just started. I've just started. If individual can build a university in Nigeria, I think I can build one. I don't know your own. I'm telling you my I'm telling you my own. I want to build a university where the the fees will be lower in such a way that the people that come there will not be deprived of quality college education because of the fees. It is possible. It is possible. An individual gave one billion naira to a university in this country as scholarship. One what? One what? Billion, not million. You know, I'm telling you what, I'm challenging you because don't think of yourself. De because after today, destiny and past will locate you. And when they locate you, when they locate you, 
you also begin to raise up others. I started a college of health tech six years ago, primarily for orphans who could not get admission and who have no money to go to university. I said, okay, let's have, we have the fund, let's start. Like a joke. Today is accredited by Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, Medical Lab, and, and Lagos State approved it. And now it can provide job for over 500 people. I, listen, I'm not saying this to praise me. Don't pluck her for me. I've not earned one naira from there. One naira has not come into my pocket from there. I didn't start it for what I will eat. God has provided what I will eat. It's for others, for jobs, for admission. People can get their license as a pharmacy and practice, a pharmacy uh, technician and practice, medical lab technician and practice and start their own business because they have the license. They don't need to be begging to apply. That's the purpose. And I am telling you, that's just a beginning point. If somebody can start a university, he doesn't have two heads. He's a human being. Is God partial? Is he a first class citizen of God, of heaven? Is he a, uh, the only son of God? God doesn't have grandchildren. I, am, I, am, I have the same right to God, the same right he has. In this nation, we will all impart our world together. You will rule your world. I will rule my world. I want to stop here because my time is up. But I want to pray for some people. Listen to me. After this conference, you must identify your calling, your shape, your endowment. 